once again before the throne of grace. Like an empty pitcher before a pool of fountain. With no merit of my own. And Lord, I pray that you will open up a window of heaven and lean far out over the balcony of glory. And listen to your child pray this morning. Lord, this morning, I invoke your presence. Lord, I invite you in. Lord, I know it's just a formality, but it's your program. It's your service. It's your meeting. And Lord, it's my chance. You're not here. We want you to know you've already been invited. Lord, we lift our eyes to see your glory. Lord, we open our hearts to receive your love. Lord, we engage our minds to understand your truth. Lord, we offer our songs to praise your name. Lord, this morning, we praise you.
way. But if you would allow me to take you back into the past just a minute, when our founding leader was yet alive, and we were, he was scheduled to preach Bishop Anderson's anniversary on that Sunday. But the devil attacked his body. And our pastor was in the hospital at this time. And listen, our church was praying, 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 praying. And we was asking God, Lord, is, are you getting ready to take him now? What is going on in this place? And that Sunday morning, I'll never forget, we came into this place. And there was a spirit of praise. And Ella Miller was the uh, president of the choir. And uh, that morning, we sung... Praise is what I do. I just want to tell you that, they, that the spirit of the Lord broke out in this place. I want to tell you that we got great news from the hospital. I want to tell you that we began to shout all over this place. We began to run and praise God. We went down to Bishop Anderson's anniversary. I sat there and 
and I contemplated, Lord, should I go or should I wait? I heard you Joseph. Amen. And I understand. Amen. I understand. But I heard the, list. the Lord say, stand still. Okay. Stand still because I want the people to hear the word today. I want the people to hear the word of God today. Don't nobody love praising God any more and any greater than I do. Amen. Because all you got to do is start reminding me of where God has brought me. And if I have a few seconds, I don't need a few minutes, but just a few seconds to think back where God has brought me from. From a child on up until this very point in my life. I start with, I can't help but to wave my hand. <sighs> and I get happy every time I think about what the Lord has done for me. Mm. God bless you today. The house has already been addressed, but we thank God. Thank God for First Lady being here. Thank God for touching her body, allowing her to be here today. Amen. Thank God for... Mother Rogers, First Lady, and then Emeritus. Amen. And to the great assistants, amen, that we have, amen, and to the mothers, the deacons, and to all of God's people, so happy to see the guests and friends and family. Amen. Many of you that have been ill, amen, back, amen, today. God bless you, Mother Marsha. Amen. And many of you, amen, that have been, have been out for various reasons. Amen. I, 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 I wrestled almost all night long I, I back and forth, up and down and I said Lord you got to do it because I can't but I'm standing in the strength of the Lord today I hope you moved while the water was troubled I hope you gave God your praise while the water was troubled amen because God sure moved in this house God moved, God moved Thank you, Jesus. He's still healing bodies, even right now, Brother Andy. The presence of God is still in the house, even right now. He's opening blind eyes. He's mending broken hearts. He's soothing those troubling thoughts that you have. I'm speaking to somebody already right now. Fret not. Give it to God and watch it work it out. Amen. Fret not. Amen. Give it to God. He's working it out even right now. He's working it out right now. Ah, thank you, Jesus. But as I laid and I contemplated over the word of God and what he would have me to say and how he would have me to say it, Elder Joseph, amen, God said, stand still and deliver my word. You wonder why, amen, and many of us have made the statement, amen, amen, I, I, I remember when, amen, when, when, when mama first got saved, I remember when daddy first got saved, I remember when the preacher was preaching and how, amen, we saw, amen, people that was crippled, amen, limbs start working all of a sudden. I remember when the church used to hang the crutches on the wall, the the wheelchairs was placed in a place in the church. I come to tell you, I come to remind you that same power is still here. But it's up to you to activate it. I'm not talking to somebody. I say that power, it's up to you to activate that power. There's a place in God that we've got to go. You can blame it on the preacher, the missionary, the mother, the deacon if you want to. But it's up to me. I wish I had somebody to put their hand on this step and say it's up to me. It's up to me to activate that thing. I want to talk to you for a few minutes today. And yes, I remember when. Yes, I too remember. But there's a couple of things that my parents taught me 
Amen. And I understand it more now better than I ever had in my life. Yes. One of the things my mother, amen, and I know my siblings, amen, can identify, but she told us after we got to a certain age and children, I, amen, I had children, my children were small and, amen, a young man, amen, and, and I started developing a, a closer relationship with God. She said, pray and ask God to give you the spirit of discernment. Missionary Hartha really didn't understand what she was really saying mm -hmm. the first time. Yes, sir. But she kept on telling me, Sister Harrison, yes, sir. amen, to continue to pray that God would give you the spirit of discernment. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And as time passed, and I started encountering a few things in my life when the children were small, amen, and we were struggling to make ends meet as a little young family. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Didn't always have the finer things, wasn't able to drive and live in some of these places, amen, that many of you as young parents are able to do now. Amen. Amen. But God kept us. Yes, he is. Yes, he did. I said, but God kept yes, us. Yes, he did. God fed us. Yes. God clothed us. And he, amen, and gave us that that we had need of. Yes, and I remember when, it's, when the children were small and oftentimes because we were working early and had to be at work early, amen, sometimes they would go and spend the night with my mother and my father, amen, and there they would love to go, yes, because, amen, as most grandparents know, seem like grandparents go an extra mile. They love the pancakes in the morning, the, the hot breakfast in the morning, whereas at home, it was on the go. A bowl of cereal, let's get out of here. A Pop-Tart, let's go. Amen, let's, let's, let's do some cinnamon toast. We got to go at my house. But at grandma's house, they could get some pancakes. They could get some bacon, amen. They could get some warm grits, amen. Some hot oatmeal at grandma's house. Amen, at one particular time, they had to go to grandma's house. Amen, and my daughter at that time, she was small and she was very talkative, very talkative. Amen. I had to, amen, settle down, amen, even as a little child in school. Just loved to talk all the time, even when she wasn't supposed to talk. Amen. Amen. And while there at Grandma's house, Grandma, we, 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 we love, we glad we're here with you. Amen. Amen. But we got to take a bath because we don't have no hot water. Now, now, I know I'm not the only one that went through some struggles. But I'm putting my business out there. I know I'm not the only one that had to boil some water so that you can take a bath. Am I in the house on this morning? Am I in the house this morning? I'm not the only one that had to put, amen, those big pots on the stove so that the water would be lukewarm. But, 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 but my daughter told my business, our business, that they had to take a bath at Grandma's house because, amen, they, they weren't able to take a bath at home because the water was not hot. And somehow, my father got the message. And, and, and daddy called, amen, and you know, amen, being a pastor, he would leave early and get home late, amen. And I got a call sometime, I don't know, after 11, a little bit before 12, and said, son, tomorrow, come by the house, get a check, 
and go pay your gas. I know my dad is holy, but how did he know that I didn't have no... Well, I remember Mama did say, pray for the spirit of discernment. I guess they didn't discern that I don't have no gas. Because now if you, those of you that knew my father, you could come into his presence and he knew if you were hungry. He knew if you were troubled. He knew if you hadn't had a meal. Amen. Your lights were off or something. The Spirit of God would touch him in a way. And before you would leave out of his presence, he was meeting that need right. that you had. Right. I said, Lord. I hadn't got there yet, but in a few days, if I keep on, I'm on my way. I said, well, I understand for the spirit of discernment. So, you know, when your children grow up, you start to feel some things. You sense some things. That's right. And you understand. But then there was a spirit that my father, amen, prayed over us. And I can only talk for myself. That when I accepted this call into the ministry, he said, son, I want you to pray now that God would anoint you. Uh -huh. yeah. It's all right to say words and, and go and do some things, but you need the anointing. That's what I want to talk to you about. Too. Come on, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, we need the anointing. We need the anointing. If you have the Holy Ghost, you are anointed. Can I? I'm going to talk today. I'm just going to talk today. I'm glad you shouted already. But the anointing comes through the power of the Holy Ghost. If you have the Holy Ghost, Mother Moraine, you have the anointing. You don't have to wait on the preacher, the pastor, the deacon, or no one to come, amen, when there's a situation that God needs to step in. Yes, you can activate the power of God on your own. I heard you say you prayed the other day, Deacon Jackson, and I, and I heard you, and I still remember, Amen. and how God moved because of your faith. Amen. While I was reading the scripture, amen, these thoughts came to my mind in this word of God. And here, now it appears that, that the battle has been fought. And the victory has been won and everything is over. And we are shouting the victory because we are anointed. And we have seen the manifestation with the anointing that God had granted unto us. Yes, sir. But then there in that 13th verse, as we read, amen, it, it, it read, and then in other words, it is saying, amen, it ain't over. Tell somebody, it ain't over. It ain't over. Come on, tell somebody, it ain't, over. it ain't over. Amen, I hate to tell you, but it ain't over. Yep. Ah, it appeared that it was over, but how many of you know about the time that you think, amen, you've overcome one thing? Yes, sir. Here comes something else. Hallelujah. Mom and dad didn't know the amen that because, amen, the gas was off, it was because we were having a deal with another thing. Yes, uh -huh. Huh? Yes. If it ain't one thing, yes, it's yes. another. Yes. Sometimes the thing does not wait until the other is over before something else comes in. Yes, but you find yourself dealing with one, two, or multiple things, amen, all at the same time. Because not only does the devil want to destroy you, 
But he wants to wipe you out. He wants to take you so far out that there will be no recognition of the power of the anointing that you once had. But I come to tell you that the devil is alive. I'm speaking to that enemy today, prophetic in this house on today. I said the devil is alive. Thank God for my anointing. Come on, tell somebody, I thank God for my anointing. I'm glad that there are the families here today because you need to know, amen, what you possess. Because when the enemy comes in to your house, as he has done mine and many others, when he comes into your house, won't just be mom and dad counseling his assignment. Amen. But as you keep your children around, your sons and your daughters around, amen, they can be anointed too. Uh -huh. The Lord to feel, ask them the Lord to fill them with the Holy Ghost. Because the power of the anointing, amen, comes from the Holy Ghost. And it doesn't matter if you are a man or woman, boy or girl. You are anointed if you are filled with the Holy Ghost. Let me say this today, greater than by the way, because of the power, amen, because of the anointing, amen, that it is up on, and I claim it today, your leader. Yes, sir. God will allow some drippings. God will allow some residue to fall up on you. That is why some of us, some of you, amen, that are not saved can do what you do. It is because you have been introduced to an anointing. Yes, sir. You might not know what it is, might not know how to classify it, uh -huh. but God has allowed you to be, amen, in the right place yes, sir. Thank you, God. at the right time oh, yes. to thank receive God. some of his anointing. Yes, Somebody ought to say, thank God I'm anointed. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Let me tell you what I have found out about the anointing. By reading God's word. Yes. It is more than just the he coming in a Honda. Amen. It is more than a jumping and a shouting. Yes. It's more than running up and down these aisles and rolling in the floor. Yes. I said the anointing Amen. is more than that. Yes. But it's something that empowers you to do the supernatural thing. Hallelujah. Not only that, but it sits you apart. It sits you apart from everybody else. Back in the Bible days, whenever, amen, they got ready to anoint the king or the priest, they would go, amen, and get the priest. Amen. And he would get the horn of oil, amen, and would pour it upon the head and it would drip down, all the way down to the feet yes, of them that would be set aside yes, for a service. Amen. Do you remember David? At Genesis, amen. Amen. Samuel anointed him because the Lord wasn't going to use Saul anymore. Yes, How many of you remember the story? Yes, now look at this. When David was anointed, he didn't immediately go to the throne, but he was set aside. That's right. Amen. That in the 16th chapter, amen, of 1 Samuel. But then, amen, in the 17th chapter is where David was able to use the power and the anointing that had been given unto him. Yes. Don't worry if you know you've been called of God. And it seemed like everybody is moving to the front. Everybody has the big positions. Everybody, amen, name is changing, amen, from Sally Sue, amen, to prophetess Sally Sue. Come on now. Huh? Come on, yes, sir. Amen, don't worry. You've been set aside. Hallelujah, somebody. I come to tell you that today. That God has anointed. Yes, and he has set you apart. Amen. He has put you in a place. 
where the devil cannot find you. Set you apart, amen, to where even you can't mess with the anointing that God has given you. You know why? Thank you for asking me. It's just like the song says. There's a storm out on the ocean that is about to come to shore. Amen. And it's going to, amen, he's going to use you to reverse the curse. There has been generations of generational curses, amen, that have been, amen, in the family. But I come to tell you today that God is going to use you to reverse with the word of God because you are anointed yes you are there amen there are some things that your family haven't been able to do but I come to tell you that the Lord said get ready can you tell somebody just get ready I know you've been sitting on your seat waiting when is your time but look at somebody and tell them get ready you're going to be the first one to do that in your family. Why? Because you are anointed. He has set you apart for a time such as this. You've been set aside. I come to tell about 50 of you that are in the house today that this really is your season. Mm -hmm. That this really is your year. I'm speaking about that. I wish you'd just receive the word of God. That this really is your year. Your decade. You might ask why do you say that? Because a decade is compassed of year after year after year. In other words, every time you turn around, God is getting ready to anoint you for a breakthrough. Every time you turn around, God is getting ready to anoint you to do something that you have. I wish somebody would get happy to give God a the praise in this house. Anybody really want to be anointed? Amen. Are you really excited about the anointing and the power of God that will enable you to do what you do, not only in the church, but at home, wherever you go, listen to the sick. Somebody ought to tell God. I need your yes. anointing. I need to know. I know I may not have heard, I may have heard a lot about it, but I want to experience this thing yes, for myself. Yes, sir. I say again, I have heard. Have you heard that I was anointed? By the way, somebody ought to hear that we are anointed. Just can't be, amen, the anointing, amen, just can't have it, amen, and nobody realize that you are anointed. Amen, but let me tell you who is really going to know that you are anointed. Amen, and that is your enemies. Did y'all hear what I said? Yes, sir. Those ones that's been plotted. Yes, those ones that have been planted. Yes, those ones that have been laying the trip, the traps. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, they're gonna know that you are anointed. Yes, uh-huh. They're gonna know, they're gonna know. Your enemy's gonna know that you you are anointed because you didn't roll your eyes. Yes, and then when you heard, and when you even saw yes. the things that they tried to do. Yes. Yes. Yeah, your enemy is going to know, Brother Deacon, that you are anointed because you didn't retaliate, amen, when you saw what they did to you. Uh-huh. How they tried to mess with your family. Uh-huh. How they tried to do some devilish things on your child. Somebody's going to know that you're anointed, amen, and people have to look like this but they have got to recognize that you are anointed. Amen. I wish y'all could get happy with me. You don't have to come and support your ministry. All right. 
All right. They don't have to stand up even when you sing, Sister Perry. All right. But when they get in their car, when they make it back home, they might not like you. But you know that girl sold and sang today. They might, it might not even come out of their mouth. But something to come up on the inside of them and say, that girl sung the power of God down in that house on the day. I thank God that I'm a part of an anointed church. I thank God I'm a part of a church where the spirit flows. Because God is I thank God that I'm a part of the greater new Bible Church of God in Christ. This is a church where love flows because God is in control. A church where God is really real. Hi, my name is Dennis Rogers, pastor here at the Greater New Bible Word Church of God in Christ. I would like to welcome you to our services. Service times are Sunday morning prayer and Sunday school, 9 a.m. Sunday morning worship, 11 a.m. Sunday evening Pentecostal service, 7 p.m. Midweek service, Thursday, 7 p.m.